Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. We begin tonight with storms popping off all around the northern half of San Antonio. Definitely have our attention tonight. Some areas in the hill country getting some rain, but is that rain going to actually make it here to the Alamo City? Let's check in with Adam Kasky. Yeah, we have those dark clouds off to the north and some showers on the outskirts of our area. You get up into parts of the hill country. We've had some activity even as close as Pipe Creek Bandera area. Not very widespread. This is pretty isolated. You put it into motion and as the little boundary is moving through, it's been kickstarting some of these moderate to heavy downpours, but they're pretty brief. It's splash and dash. You see Bandera recently got hit by a little downpour, especially on the east side of Bandera Pipe Creek, Pipe Creek, just some light rain at the moment. Still some time for development around town. However, as time goes by, I'm losing confidence in much more development actually happening. We had this one little shower pop up on the east side of town right over I-10. That was uh, between five and six o'clock. I-10 and 1604. That was it. That's all that outflow boundary could really muster up. Very brief in nature and just a quick splash and dash downpour. The ingredients were there. The clouds just aren't exactly cooperating right now to get stuff going across the rest of town. There still is an opportunity through about 10 p.m. tonight, but as the time goes by and we don't see any more action, I start to lose my confidence, at least locally around San Antonio. East of town, Lavaca County, DeWitt County, even Gonzales County, some good pop up downpours there, widely separated in nature and thrown that outflow boundary southwards. This is nice to see a few soaking showers, but very brief. I do have more confidence in better rain chances in the days ahead. We'll pinpoint that for you coming right up. All right, thank you, Adam. We'll see you in a bit. New at six, a high profile death penalty trial that was expected to begin in Webb County next month will now be taking place here in Bear County. We first told you about this yesterday, and today we're learning how that transition might take place. Juan David Ortiz, a former Border Patrol agent, is charged with capital murder after investigators believe he killed four women. Erica Hernandez spoke with the Webb County DA about the change of venue. And she also has details on the logistics at an already crowded courthouse here in San Antonio. We'll be ready to go. Webb County District Attorney Isidro Alanis, the lead prosecutor on the case, has been preparing to go to trial in Laredo since 2018. But yesterday, Webb County Judge Oscar Hill granted a defense motion to move the capital murder trial of Juan David Ortiz to San Antonio. Most important thing here is that the evidence uh, doesn't change. Uh, the facts are the same. The law is the same. Uh, it's just a different jury. Uh, so we're, we're excited and looking forward to the opportunity to present this case to the people there in San Antonio. Ortiz, a Border Patrol agent at the time in September 2018, is accused of killing four women in a span of a couple weeks and leaving their bodies off I-35 north of Laredo. The murders and his arrest garnered national attention. So it's expected for this case to take four weeks for jury selection and then another three weeks for trial. A case of this magnitude being moved to Bear County could present some problems. So unfortunately, this may not be the kind of case where this three week trial is going to be in one exclusive place, but it may just have to be moved day by day, depending on what judge can can make their courtroom available for that trial. But criminal administrative judge Ron Hill emphasized that Bear County will accommodate the best they can. I think it's important that, that we do do our part, you know, as a good neighbor to other counties to ensure that we provide them the resources uh, that they need to, tr to do that trial as effective as effectively and efficiently as they can. A jury selection is expected to begin October 21st. 300 potential jurors will be summoned. The trial will begin once a jury is seated which will more likely be in November. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A man died overnight after a fight along the Riverwalk, and now another man is charged with manslaughter in this case. 46-year-old Rafael Mata was arrested not far from where police say this happened, near West Crockett and St. Mary's. Witnesses told officers there was some sort of argument between the two men. One of the men tried to get away by climbing onto some elevated landscaping. Then the other man punched him. Police say the victim may have hit his head when he fell. He was pronounced dead there at the scene. Investigators have not identified the victim or said what the two men may have been arguing about. 
San Antonio police searching for a suspect following a shooting on the northwest side that left a man in critical condition. It happened in the 4000 block of Gardendale a little before 10 o'clock last night. When police reached the scene, officers say they found the victim had been shot several times. There was no sign of the shooter, though. They took off before officers arrived. Police did not offer a description of the suspect or a suspect vehicle in this case. Police in Selma catching up to a man they say stole some Yeti coolers and threatened an employee with a stun gun in the process. 32-year-old Michael Anthony Patino has been charged with aggravated robbery. Officers say the robbery happened at the Academy store along I-35 in Selma last week. Patino was allegedly grabbing those coolers when he was confronted by an employee. That's when investigators say that Patino pulled out that stun gun and the employee then backed off. Police believe Patino may be connected to another robbery at an academy here in San Antonio. The legal road ahead may be a long one for three women. Bear County deputies say tried to get away after a wild encounter in West Bear County this morning. All three eventually were caught on Shanefield Road, not far from Wild Horse Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, the encounter also included a broken window on a patrol car. A call about an assault at a West Bear County home left the sheriff's deputy's SUV showing some scars. The deputy had just arrived around 3.30 this morning at the home on Round Ridge Street, where a woman allegedly beat her boyfriend with a mason jar. A sheriff's supervisor says the 18-year-old woman had called two friends to pick her up, and as they left, one of them smashed the back window on the deputy's patrol car. He went after them and called for help. You can tell from all the glass here in the street that that window took a beating and is in need of some major repairs. As for the man who was beaten, deputies tell us he suffered minor injuries. Another deputy, meanwhile, had spotted the car with the women on Shanefield Road and stopped it. But that apparently didn't stop one of them. Deputies say the 18-year-old involved in the assault also is to blame for this car ending up on the curb that she tried to get away again as they took her and her friends into custody. They say she was able to slip out of her handcuffs and jump behind the wheel. Ultimately, though, all three women got a ride to jail. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A suspect in a robbery at a food mart and a carjacking has now been arrested. San Antonio police say 29-year-old Nathan Flores is facing two counts of aggravated robbery. Police say he allegedly robbed a store on South Zarzamora at gunpoint last Sunday. He's accused of carjacking someone the next day. Flores was arrested shortly after that. SAPD says that he matched the description of the suspect in the store robbery. Police say he later admitted to robbing the store during questioning. New at six, as we told you yesterday, the city's homeless street outreach team has been struggling with hiring and retaining staff. The team has 10 district coordinator positions, plus another for downtown that's never even been filled. And it's been hard at times to keep the other roles filled. So Garrett Berger took a ride along with one of the outreach coordinators and his manager to see what that job entails. How you doing? It's Trez from the city. Week after week, Trez Scipio hits the streets, woods, and tunnels of Council District 8 on the far northwest side, running into new and familiar faces. Last time I met him, he said he was God. Today, he's not God. So I'm like, okay, so now that you're not God, would you like some assistance? I guess the first question, are you interested in getting off the street? For him, the job's about meeting the needs of, of a person at that we, point, whether it's helping them out with a few basics, the connecting them to ID recovery services, encouraging them to pursue education, or getting them into rehab. All of these things which are necessary to get a person literally out of the ditch and into hopefully on that path of housing. It's tough work though, and the city says five outreach workers have resigned since the team started, including one whose last day is next week. Once he goes, there will be four vacancies out of 11 positions. Our goal is, of course, to have all the districts full at all times, but we know, you know, things happen and folks find other opportunities and they move on and, and we're okay with that. Jadrum hopes that the proposed pay bumps of at least 7% for city employees in the proposed budget do help with hiring, but the city is already working to fill the vacancies. One position, she said, has been tentatively accepted. The other three have offers extended too. But Scipio says there also needs to be more housing and wraparound services to make sure there's somewhere for folks to go after the team helps them get off the streets. 
plus programs to help them with good jobs. In order to be able to get a person from where they are to where they want to, to where they need to go or where they want to go, you know, it's going to take change. The person has to change. The system has to change. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, there is some hope tonight for local businesses that got dealt a double whammy, the pandemic and then street construction projects. $17 million in federal COVID relief funds include supplemental grants for qualifying businesses impacted by detours, torn up streets and barricades. But as Jesse Degollado tells us, they have to meet a certain criteria of when that construction began and where their businesses are located. Cruising North St. Mary's isn't what it used to be. Now it's more like an urban obstacle course. But like most street construction projects, in the name of progress. We were hoping it would move along a little faster than it has, but it is what it is. So Getting in and out of Page Bartow catering can take some doing. But what does help? They bend over backwards to make sure we can come and go and do what we need to do. Yet like all too many small businesses, the pandemic took its toll. It's uh, gone <laughs> paycheck to paycheck. To hang on to the handful of employees it still has, where once it had 40 people working here. It's uh, COVID and then construction on top of things um, has, has made it really tough. Some of our businesses have recovered, some are still trying to recover. It's why for the first time the city and lift fund are now offering COVID impact grants of up to $35,000 and $10,000 construction impact supplemental grants. The basic criteria for the construction grant, if work began between September of 2019 and December of last year. Also, the business must be within a one mile radius. We're just glad that we were able to offer the supplement uh, as a part of the grant program. So we figured why not? We'll, we'll apply for the grant and hope, hope something comes of it. The deadline to apply is 5 p.m. Monday, and there's even help available to fill out the application. We have that link on our website, KSAT.com. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a quick look with Time Saver Traffic with TransGuide on this Thursday. Taking a look at your evening commute there at Loop 410 at Cherry Ridge. Everything moving along quite smoothly tonight. Meantime, a look outside with live can I'm Adam Kasky watching some showers around San Antonio. The question, will it make it our way this evening? And if we have any future chances, his forecast is coming up in just a bit. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Stefania Jimenez, and here's what we're working on for you tonight on the Night Beat. Concerns over a plan to clear congestion. The city of San Antonio is taking a closer look at traffic issues on Bandera Road. It's looking at a plan, but before leaders approve it, neighbors have questions. Everybody will know that that guardian is there to guard children uh, in the event that the absolute worst happens. A proposal aimed at protecting schools, how one parent wants to use the Guardian program without arming teachers. Plus, black residue, bugs, a live bird, what? Yeah, they all turned up on one restaurant's health inspection, and we're going to show you where. We'll see you for these stories and a lot more tonight on The Night Beat. We'll see you then. Thank you. We want to get you back to that late breaking news we first mentioned during the news at five where we are awaiting information on some arrests made by the Bear County Sheriff's Office. We now know that a 57 year old woman is fighting for her life tonight after investigators say she was neglected by three people who were supposed to be taking care of her. That information coming in just a few minutes ago from Sheriff Javier Salazar or Camilla Juarez is live at the Sheriff's Office with more on what investigators have revealed so far. So Camilla, who are the suspects? What do we know about them? Tim, Myra, deputies say the suspects neglected their own mother. The sheriff tells us she's bedridden with a number of health conditions and is on a ventilator. And when the police found her, when deputies found her, she was in an old diaper. Now, deputy... Some of her medical providers noticed that there was a steep decline in her level of health. Um, they notified Adult Protective Services, who in turn notified us, which led us to begin the investigation a couple days ago, and found that, that she was in such deplorable conditions that we felt the need to take uh, resolute action very quickly. 
Deputies say the three suspects were all living with their mother. They were trained by the state to care for her, but Sheriff Salazar says they appear to have done nothing. Each one is being charged with severe injury to a disabled person, and that's a first degree felony. Now, if she if she passes, their charges could be upgraded to murder. Now, when we saw each of the suspects, they passed by us earlier. They said they were innocent. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. All right, a story we will follow. Thank you, Camelia. Let's take a look outside with Sky 12. Meantime, one of San Antonio's most beautiful sights, flying above Mission San Jose this evening. You know it would make it even more pretty <laughs> if there was some rain falling over there. Yeah, and if it was green grass yes. around the mission, right? I know, it's still pretty uh, brown around there, but this is a... Uh, of course, right, right when it <laughs> you come to me, wah, 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 I can try again to connect, but let's just see. Okay, it was a wonderful time lapse and turn it off and turn it back on. <laughs> that. That's what <laughs> did the old trick, right? Okay, well we're gonna move on. That was a nice time lapse that we had of the outflow moving in. Outflow boundary kicking up some showers uh, in some locations. Locally, really just clouds from the outflow. The timing, of course. Maybe I'll go buy a lottery ticket later today and I'll turn things around. I don't know. Probably not a good idea. All right, taking a look at the downpours east of town. Parts of Lavaca County, Gonzales County, now DeWitt County moving toward Victoria. We're seeing that activity. This is pretty isolated in nature, but one heavier downpour just east of Cuero and all surrounding the city of Cuero, some action, but Cuero, you could still get in a quick downpour here momentarily. We go farther to the west, one little shower in Wilson County. And this green line, if you're wondering what that is, that's the actual outflow boundary. That's that puff of wind from storms to the north of us. And this is traveling southward. And usually it's enough to kickstart some showers and storms, especially given the conditions we have outside today. We're expecting them to develop, but it just hasn't happened. The ingredients were there, but the clouds just aren't cooperating. There's still a slight chance through about 10 11 PM, but I think right now is our best opportunity. Instead, we just have the gray sky to tease us, but that outflow boundary is at least going to give you a cool breeze. You go farther to the West Bandera County, some widely separated activity there, and then even farther to the West and parts of the hill country, some action as well. Better to change radar sites. Give us a different view here of that action. And here we go. There we go. It's just not my luck today, is it? You should see Myra over there just <laughs> laughing. Typical luck here for I'm, me. I'm laughing with you. Yes, thank not you. Not at you. I know you are. I know you yeah. are. Anyway, we can switch back and just this isolated activity. Not a whole lot of rain has fallen within some of the heaviest downpours up to about a quarter of an inch, and that's about it. Again, still an opportunity through about 10 11 PM. Otherwise, just mostly cloudy tonight. Cross your fingers for those chances through 10 11 o'clock as we, of course, could use it. And the ingredients are there. Just clouds aren't cooperating. OK, at least the future cast is working. Let's go to tomorrow. Mixture of sun and clouds. This is noon and into the afternoon one or two little isolated or stray pop up showers likely to develop very brief splash and dash in nature. They pop up rain for maybe 10 15 minutes and then collapse and rain themselves out. And I know the future cast shows one right over San Antonio in the east side of town. I wouldn't bet on that actually verifying just the mere fact that it's showing some uh, spotty across our area through tomorrow afternoon and into the evening hours. I do have higher hopes for rain chances next week. Right now we've got it up to 40% for Tuesday and Wednesday. A, a shift in our weather pattern should boost those chances a bit. And I do think we could have some good soaking heavy downpours scattered in nature by at least Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll keep you updated. It's still a lot of time between now and then. Here's that little tropical moisture we're watching and tropical wave, a little ripple in the flow. That's still headed across the Yucatan into the western Gulf of Mexico. About a 30% chance of that developing into a tropical system. Even then, it looks like all the effects of it will be to the south of us. Even rainfall, unfortunately, I don't think we'll get from that. 99 the high today. Average 96. You see some rain cooled air. Kerrville 85, New Braunfels 82, Austin at 74, 79 at Fredericksburg, but still 100 in some locations, even 103 Divine Hondo right now at 98. That outflow boundary really having an impact on temperatures as well. As that goes southward, you're going to be feeling it soon on the south side of Bear County. 
We're swimming in the humidity. Dew points around 70. We start the day tomorrow at 76. Make it to about 95 the high temperature. 30% chance into the afternoon. And most of us in the mid 90s for highs. I don't think we'll be hitting 100 in the foreseeable future. So the record still eludes us by one day. Okay. Technical difficulties aside, it's Thursday. <laughs> That's right, it is. So we'll talk about that. We'll make up, up for later. it. All right, thanks, Adam. All right, Larry, Cowboys sharing practice with the Chargers. Yeah, it was their second day of dual practices with the Los Angeles Chargers. I still want to call them <laughs> San Diego and have to catch myself all the darn time. And that session ended today with a Hail Mary to Dennis Houston out of San Antonio. And does Deshaun Watson think his 11-game suspension is fair? Coming up. Back with the Houston, how do you feel about that? Uh, right now, uh, that's you know down the road. Right now, I'm focusing on you know getting ready to practice against Philly. Deshaun Watson will make his Browns regular season debut against his former club, the Texans, in Week 13, following his suspension. But he's not thinking about that in big board sports. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys cornerback Jordan Lewis will miss the rest of training camp with a hamstring injury. He hurt his hamstring yesterday, limping off the field toward the end of the Cowboys joint practice with the L.A. Chargers. He was scheduled to have an MRI today, and Lewis told the Dallas Morning News he should be back for week one. Cowboys and Chargers held a dual practice again today, and here's the play of the session. Dak Prescott scrambling around, throws deep, and it's a Hail Mary. And Dennis Houston from Warren High School comes down with the ball to close out the session. Awesome with the Chargers. Yeah, definitely good to end on that note. And uh, just being in that situation in the game, having to go Hail Mary with the clock running. Uh, the guys did a good job of protecting, giving me a lane, letting me buy some time, jumped up in there. And I saw Simeon and Dennis felt like they had a good shot at it and put it up. And I felt like it was just them two fighting for it. And glad we came down with it. Wide receivers Noah Brown and C.D. Lamb did not practice today. Brown has a toe injury and Lamb a cut on his foot. The boys will play at the Chargers Saturday night, then head back to Frisco to resume training camp. Houston Texans wide receiver Chris Moore is getting ready for his second season with the team and sixth in the NFL. The former fourth round draft pick produced a career high 21 catches for 227 yards and two touchdowns with Houston last season. Moore really got after it during the offseason as he seeks more playing time. I mean, every time I come out here on the field, I, I mean, I, I give my heart, hardest work. I work hard. Um, I think it, it should improve even more this year because me and Davis got some good time in the offseason with uh, all the receivers getting together and throwing. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing in the league. If you could be consistent, you could play for a long time. Texans will play at the L.A. Rams tomorrow night at 9 in preseason game number two. Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson is suspended without pay for the first 11 games of the upcoming regular season and fined $5 million for violations of the NFL's personal conduct policy. It was announced today. In addition, Watson will promptly undergo professional evaluation by behavioral experts and will follow their treatment program. He was accused by more than two dozen women of sexual misconduct during massage sessions. The announcement comes after an agreement reached by the NFL and NFL. FLP A and concludes the disciplinary process. I can't speak on the, the fairness. I only can really control what I can control. And that's, you know, through, throughout this process, you know, the NFL did what they had to do. And the uh, NFLPA, you know, communicated with the legal side. Like I said before, I focused on, you know, being out here, being the best teammate and football player and quarterback I can for the Cleveland Browns. And I let the legal side handle their side. Watson's suspension will take effect at the final roster cut down and he'll be eligible for reinstatement on November 28th and he can return to play Sunday, December 4th at the Houston Texans. Earlier this summer, the Alamo 15 Premier Volleyball team won the 2022 United States Junior National Championship in Indianapolis. We're told this is the first time since 2003 that San Antonio has won a national title in the Open Division, the highest of seven divisions offered by USA Volleyball. The names and coaching staff are on the screen. Alamo 15 Premier is comprised of several players who attended various high schools in San Antonio and surrounding areas. They currently attend them. Congratulations to the coaching staff and all of those talented players. How awesome is that? Looks like yeah. they had a good time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back.
Monkeypox, polio, and yes, COVID-19. A lot to talk about with Dr. Ruth Berggren, infectious disease specialist with the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio, who we have not seen in a while. So uh, we're glad we got a big list of topics to cover with you today. Let's start with monkeypox right now. Really, I think a huge question for people is who is at risk for this? Sure. So monkeypox is related to the smallpox virus, but it's a milder version. And this has come from the animal population, some kind of rodents, um, and uh, it got into the human population. Now, anybody can get it, but who is getting it right now is people that are at risk because of their sexual practices. So we are seeing it being primarily transmitted sexually, but not only that way. It can also be transmitted by skin to skin contact and occasionally from respiratory particles, but this seems to be less common. My question for you, doctor, is I, I keep getting questions from viewers who are older who had the smallpox vaccine, which they stopped giving out, I believe, in the, the early 70s, and they keep asking me, would that cover me in this type of situation? So the answer is you have some protection, but we haven't had this particular circumstance to test it. Um, so we'll find out. Really, the people that should be worried are those who are at high risk because of sexual exposure, multiple sexual partners, including um, men who have sex with men, but not only that population. So it does seem to be primarily in the population that has frequent sexual exposures. And we know that there have been some cases transmitted to children, a small number, but it sounds like for all the parents out there, this is not something we're expecting to see spread rapidly uh, among kids. No, certainly not. And, you know, for a kid to get it, they would have had to have close skin to skin contact with somebody that had some big old blisters that are kind of pus filled on somebody else. And these are not subtle rashes. They're not slight. These, the, the monkeypox rash is usually very painful. It usually happens in someone who's feeling sick. They have a fever, they have headache, they have swollen lymph nodes, and then they get a very painful rash that starts out as blisters that then get filled with pus and eventually turn into scabs before they fall off. So it's not really a subtle presentation. If we can shift gears from monkeypox to COVID real quickly, uh, we keep hearing about another booster shot that could be open to more folks. Now, now it's uh, 50, over 50 and immunocompromised, hard to say. When will yeah. normal folks like me uh, who are over 45 will be eligible for one of those boosters for COVID? Right, so uh, we think that people who are under 50 and not immunocompromised, like you, will be eligible for a new booster, something that's more focused on the variants that have been circulating recently, the Omicron variants, will be available sometime this fall. We haven't been given a specific date, but definitely stay tuned for that because when it becomes available, it will be a very good thing to go and get. You'll be able to get your flu shot as well, and you should be able to simultaneously get your flu shot and your COVID booster. Sure. And that's one of my questions, too. I know earlier on in the pandemic, we talked about the, the likelihood that eventually a COVID shot would be like a flu shot, something that is annual or is seasonal. So we're still talking about boosters, third and fourth rounds. Are we closer to that point where it seems like this is going to be a, a once a year thing for people? Yeah, most infectious disease doctors that I speak with and that I work with think that this is going to be with us kind of like the flu. Um, as you know, you need a different flu shot every year because the flu changes, it mutates. And so the question is, um, how frequently will we need to get it? And um, will it be a once a year shot that we get every fall like the flu shot? We'll have to wait and see. But that's what we seem to be marching towards as these variants uh, continue to appear and they as they change they seem to be getting um, more infectious easier to spread but they don't make you as sick 
Shifting gears yet again to another one that we're keeping an eye on, and that is the reemergence of polio. We've seen it in New York. A lot of questions about that. Uh, most people are vaccinated when they're children. What kind of protection do we have if you've been uh, vaccinated for the polio? If you are fully vaccinated against polio, you're fine and you don't need to worry about it. Um, children need to get four shots. Um, they get them when they're babies at about two months and four months, and then again between six and 18 months, and then yet a fourth shot uh, around four to six years of age. Now, there are some children who never got vaccinated or who only got partially vaccinated. They didn't come for the whole series. Those kids are at risk and they should go ahead and get fully vaccinated. An adult who was never vaccinated needs three shots over a period of time. And if a, an adult thinks that they were only partially vaccinated, they can come on in and get an inactivated polio vaccine shot and that should take care of them just fine. So this is an important uh, thing to pay attention to. Uh, polio can be very serious. It can paralyze you, but it's entirely preventable. The vaccines really work. And these vaccines, they are standard vaccines now that are given as part of the vaccination schedule for kids in that age group, babies that you're talking about. This is not something, if, they, if a kid is up to date on their vaccinations, a parent doesn't really need to double check that. They should have received it. That's right. And, and you're right, these vaccines are nothing new. They're decades old in terms of the technology. This is an old fashioned inactivated polio vaccine. We don't give live or oral polio vaccine in the United States anymore. If you are vaccinated, you are protected. Dr. Ruth Bergren, as always, great to see you and thanks so much for being here. Happy to be with you, Myra. We'll be right back. All right, look outside with live cam. We've got the clouds out there. Where's the rain? Yeah, well, I find myself saying the same thing, right? <laughs> because we had the ingredients all there today, and this afternoon we just couldn't get them generated around San Antonio, and sometimes the clouds atmosphere doesn't cooperate. We still have a sliver of hope, though, through about midnight, a 20 to 30 percent chance. So cross your fingers. Otherwise, 91 right now. By 8 o'clock, we'll be in the mid 80s. 10 o'clock, about 82 degrees. I do see better chances of rain around the corner. We'll talk about that in the extended forecast and the latest on that little tropical swirl we were watching coming right up. Well, the rain for the most part has petered out before it made it here to San Antonio, but the good news is we still have some more chances coming our way. We do. This wasn't it. And actually, I see much better chances around the corner and that's several days from now. But let's take a look at the radar. Currently, you look off to the west. Not a lot of action out there. A few pop ups. Edwards County, Northern Valverde County, pretty short lived action here. Quick splash and dash, as we like to call them, really not lasting all that long. And you go east of San Antonio and we have some heavy downpours, especially in DeWitt County, Southern Lavaca County, making a line now eastward toward Houston. A lot of the activity today has been in Houston, and that's where they've had some stronger storms and um, heavier rainfall. But this is coming together and you can see the lightning, the white lines really becoming more numerous, an indication that this is strengthening in DeWitt County. So this is a good soaker just east of Cuero and right along the Victoria County line. This is nice to see. It's good that some folks are actually getting some heavy soaking rainfall. It's just not for us around San Antonio. This go around. I mentioned before a sliver of hope for some rain through about midnight. There still is that chance. I don't have a lot of confidence in it, but there is the opportunity. The chance is not zero. OK, small chance, but something to cross your fingers for. When you look at this, this is where we saw rainfall today and you can see a lot of it was off to the north of San Antonio and even east of town. Uh, everywhere you see the blue and green on the screen indicates the accumulations and the green is a half inch or more, whereas you get into the yellows and that's two inches or more of rainfall. So that was good for some folks and we're still adding it up southeast of town in DeWitt County and southern Lavaca County. I mentioned better rain chances around the corner. That's especially as we get into next week week tomorrow and eh, a little bit here and there. Here's our future cast uh, and I, I like how it just shows some isolated activity in terms of what we can expect tomorrow. I wish it was more widespread, but just a few popping up two, three, four o'clock 
even into the early afternoon. Just a few isolated downpours developing and they should be pretty brief. So even if you have the outdoor plans, I wouldn't really uh, change them around this. Just be ready to duck under a cover for a few minutes while the rain comes down. 30% chance tomorrow, even lesser chances Saturday, Sunday and Monday, mainly along the coastline a few showers this weekend. So generally dry this weekend and Monday. It's Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We're starting to see things come together for better odds of some soaking rainfall. Again, not everybody's going to get it necessarily, but at least a better coverage than what we had today or even recently. I want to give you an update on the tropics. Here's that little swirl we've been watching moving into the Yucatan Peninsula, headed toward the western Gulf of Mexico. And the National Hurricane Center has it at a 30% chance of developing into an organized tropical system. Still low end odds. Even then, I don't think it's going to throw any moisture our way no matter what. It should pass to the south of us into northern Mexico. So unfortunately, I don't even think we'll tap into any moisture from that system. 99, our high temperature today. So close. We're still one day away from tying the all time record of 100 degree days in a year. We're at 58 right now. Dew, or temperature is 91, 58 days that is. Temperature 91, dew point 67. So it feels like it's three degrees warmer than the air temperature. And there's this weak boundary pushing southward. Some clouds and rain cooled air behind it as well. 85 Abilene, 85 Dallas. Look at Lubbock right now at 79. Meanwhile, 100 in Catula, Del Rio 100, Kennedy at 96, and a big difference north south because of that outflow boundary. Divine's still 100, waiting for that boundary to move through, but 82 in Bernie, 81 Bulverde, and we've got a measurement in Canyon Lake of 79. Tomorrow morning, we should start the day in the mid 70s, mostly cloudy early, the off chance of a stray shower, 10% chance into the early afternoon. By noon, 88 degrees, and then the high temperature of 95 into the afternoon. We'll see the thicker clouds develop again and give us that 30% chance of some of those rogue showers. Seguin tomorrow, 93, Castroville, 94, and Floresville. 95 for the high looking ahead again better odds. We've got higher hopes for next week. Still some things have to come together, but at least there's a potential there and we'll keep you updated if we increase those odds, of course, in the days ahead. So check back in for updates. Oh yeah, so I've been working on a few thermometers, right? I've been taking you through the process step by step. I can't break down in video right now what we've done. We've blown the glass, filled it with alcohol, sealed it, and now an important step is exercising the thermometer. So what I do is once it's full and I sealed it, I put it in very hot water. I mean, we're talking like 200 degrees and I watch it rise all the way up to my secondary bulb, which is an overflow. And then I take it out, put it in cold water and then watch the temperature plunge. And this is important because it really clears out the tubing in there, the half millimeter diameter bore, and it gets this alcohol working up and down, up and down the length of the tubing. It's like exercise. It's important. It's helpful and it actually helps my thermometers quite a bit before I go into the calibration process. So that's where I am with those thermometers. This is probably the easiest step that I have. Uh, you know, this is one of those where a monkey can do it. No problem. Uh, just put it in hot water, take it out, put it in cold water and let it uh, let it rest. Otherwise, I've noticed um, sometimes in the t in the tubing, there can be residual alcohol that kind of gums up in it or I get little air pockets. So that's why I do this. It'll eliminate particularly air pockets from forming and still about 10% of my thermometers will get an air pocket uh, even weeks later. I know you all care. Uh, so today's winner, <laughs> Ramona Sanchez of San Antonio. Ramona Sanchez, I just sent the email to you. Congratulations. Go to KSAT.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing for a homemade thermometer. We Cas do care. Yeah. Kasky thermometers are well exercised. Well exercised and right well made. In the break room. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we'll be back. We do care. We care. Here's today's in case you missed it. 
Thursday, August 18th. We have an update on a 2019 murder involving a woman who killed a man she met on social media. The suspect, 26-year-old Elisa Cantu, sentenced to 40 years in prison. She pleaded guilty to the murder of Mark Anthony Ramirez, whom she killed in July of 2019. They arranged for a meetup for drinks, and when Ramirez picked Cantu up, she shot him in the head. His body was found on the side of the road. Investigators later found blood and a bullet casing inside his SUV. Detectives also said Cantu had pawned some of Ramirez's jewelry. And one man is dead after crossing a busy highway on the city's southwest side. According to San Antonio police, the man was crossing the highway when he was struck by a vehicle. This happened around 10 last night at the 8100 block of Southwest Loop 410. The man believed to be in his 30s was pronounced dead on the scene. The driver who hit the man with their vehicle took off before authorities arrived. The cost of diesel is down. That's good news from truckers and farmers. The national average fell to $4.99 a gallon. That's according to AAA. It is the first time diesel prices have been below $5 since early March. Papa John's expanding its menu with a crustless surprise. Papa Bowls, which are all toppings, no crust. There are three versions available, Steph. Garden veggie, chicken alfredo, and Italian meats trio. Any of those sound good? They all sound good. Okay, great. Yeah. The pizza giant says these bowls offer a healthier alternative to consumers like Stephanie Serna. The <laughs> Papa Bowls will be available next week nationwide. Other restaurants like Marco's Pizza also offer something similar. All right, the best rainfall right now. We're talking southeast of Hallettsville and just outside of Quero, Yorktown area. This is all drifting to the south, closer to the coastline and generally moving out of the KSAT 12 viewing area elsewhere. Not a whole lot to talk about. Uh, not much in terms of rainfall around here. Some lingering activity in parts of the hill country, but that's about it. Tomorrow, we get into the mid 90s for most of us. I think we'll be one under 100 degree 100 degrees for the next seven days. Better rain chances next week. Thanks for watching. See you on the night, Pete.